Next, we will look into database mirroring trace flags. What are the trace flags that we might be using for the database mirroring? The first trace flag that we might use 3499. This is the trace flag that we might have to turn on when there is a lot of uh, disk I.O. writes on the mirror server. For example, when the database mirroring session is going on, you will see a lot of transactions being shipped over from principal to the mirror server. Okay. For every log record in the redo queue, it is going to do a recovery. The restore command is going to perform for every log record on the um, mirror server. As a result, you will see a lot of disk IOs on the mirror server. And there are a lot of transactions that are coming into the principal server. That point of time, you can observe a lot of disk IO writes on the mirror server. Okay. If that is creating a performance problem for you, then uh, you might want to turn on this uh, trace flag. Okay. Basically, this is by design. Okay. Why Microsoft has purposefully uh, done recover process for every log record is to reduce the failover time. Okay. In case of failover, if the log records are recovered or restored up to date with the principal server, then the failover time will be less. Otherwise, if you turn on this trace flag, it's going to restore you know, chunk of data into the database. Okay. So in that case, the failover time will be more. Okay. Generally, uh, by default, a mirroring session will restore or recover the log records in the redo queue one by one. Okay. So to turn on the trace flag, you might want to say dbcc So this is how you turn on the trace flag. Okay. Sometimes you want to consider put this in uh, as a startup uh, parameter. Okay. Startup options. We will look into the another uh, trace flag related to the database mirroring that you might be interested. Trace flag 1462. Uh, this is the trace flag that we need to turn it off to disable the log compression on SQL Server 2008 R2. Okay. First of all, why we have log compression? Because in SQL Server 2005, there is no log compression future. Okay. So in SQL Server 2005, uh, when there are a lot of transactions that are coming into the principal database, then those transactions will be copied over to the mirror database as part of database mirroring session that will use the bandwidth the bandwidth usage will increase when there are a lot of transactions that are being shipped from principal to the mirror server. Okay. In SQL Server 2008, Microsoft introduced log compression feature. Okay. So when the log transactions, the log records on the principal server are compressed before shipped to the mirror server. On mirror server, they are decompressed and hardened to the log file on the mirror server. Okay, so that will reduce the network issues, bandwidth usage. Okay, but that might create some problem in the sense when a lot of transactions that are coming into the principal server, then there will be a heavy CPU usage on the principal and mirror server because it has to compress on the principal. Again, it has to decompress on the mirror server. Okay, if that poses a problem to you, intensive CPU is a problem, then you might want to turn off the log compression feature. Okay. There is no TSQL command. You have to use DBCC uh, command to turn off the trace flag. Okay. So you might want to set this up in the startup options. So to turn off the trace flags, you might want to say DBCC trace off. Okay. This is how you turn off the log compression feature in SQL Server database mirroring session.
Next, we will talk about maintenance considerations. The first point I would like to mention is uh, index rebuild or in index rearm. Anything that you do with log data, generating lot of log data, then you might want to consider the mirroring session performance. Okay. For example, if, if you are rebuilding index, then you might generate a lot of data. If the mirror database is in synchronous mode, high safety or high availability mode, then the performance of database mirroring session might come down. So even the reorg might generate a lot of uh, log data. Okay, so any operation that generates a lot of log data on the principle, then it might create a problem and it might bring down the performance of the database mirroring session. Okay, so you might want to uh, change the operating mode from synchronous to asynchronous before you do the rebuild, you know, uh, things like that you may have to consider. Okay, and another point is uh, quick failover. For example, you need to frequently uh, take the full backup and log backups otherwise the log file will keep growing okay if the log file is huge on the mirror server and if there is a failover then it may take long time to to fail over okay so it is important to uh, perform the full backups and log backups uh, differential backups frequently in order to control the log file size otherwise uh, if uh, log file is huge then um, it might take long time to fail over. Okay, I think in SQL Server 2005 SP1 or RTM version, the log file is huge. Uh, it might break the mirroring session. Of course, they corrected after that, but uh, there are uh, some issues. You know, having the uh, huge log file on the mirror mirror server. Okay, uh, but uh, the significant uh, thing that you might want to no make a note of it is uh, failover time. If a log file is huge, then it might take some time. Okay. And like that, there are so many other maintenance considerations uh, like uh, the network issues or you know bandwidth, uh, the CC performance, uh, uh, CPU performance, um, disk IOs, various things you might want to consider. Okay. Next, we will talk about differences between standard and enterprise editions. In standard edition, asynchronous operating mode is not allowed. Asynchronous operating mode is available in Enterprise Edition only. The next difference is the number of threads. In SQL Server Standard Edition, one redo thread per mirror database. In Enterprise Edition, one redo thread per mirror database for every four CPUs. These threads perform the actual log redo. You can read more about uh, threads on the books online. Uh, basically, for the principal server, there will be one global thread and two thread for mirror database. Okay, for the witness server, uh, usually you'll have two global threads, and for the mirror server, one global thread and three threads for mirror database, and a redo thread for the enterprise edition for four CPUs, and for the standard edition, one redo thread for one database. Okay, 